Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Courtney runs the Barkley Trail Sisters grant program and who kicked off an Arizona Trail speed record attempt. We begin this week with a pretty cool record from Kareem El Hayani. Kareem, I've known for some time and he's well versed in barefoot running but decided to take it to another level with a new barefoot half marathon record on ice or snow. He trained all winter to break the record formerly held by the well-known Iceman himself, Wim Hof. The former best time was two hours, 16 minutes, and Kareem finished in one hour, 37 minutes with supposedly blistered and cracked feet. We also saw a record in the women's 20K race walk by Yang Zhao, who took 49 seconds off the former best time, finishing in 1 hour 23 minutes 49 seconds. According to my calculations, that's a 6.44 minute per mile walking pace for over 12 miles. It was announced this past week by the Boston Athletic Association, or BAA, that the 125th running of the Boston Marathon will be held October 11th, 2021 with a 20,000 person field. I guess that's a pretty big indication that big events are heading back here in the US on the running front. Applications begin being accepted April 20th for a two week window and will go to faster qualifiers first. The qualifying window for times began September 15th, 2018. Stay tuned to find out what the final cutoff times will be based upon the applicant pool. In other big race news, the Golden Trail World Series is back this year and dishing out 160,000 euros of prize money over a seven race circuit that begins at Zagama in June, in June makes a stop at U- the US at Pikes Peak in August, and has a grand finale in Argentina in November. Still to be seen if widespread travel will allow it to permit. The 2021 edition of the Barkley Marathons also took place the pa- this past week, catching many by surprise with a first ever midweek Thursday start at 3.04 a.m. Eastern Time. After torrential downpours overnight, Laz blew the conch and the runners assembled in front of the storied yellow gate. This year, Laz handed out pocket watches as the only timepiece allowed, and the field mostly of domestic runners headed off into the darkness for a first lap half in the darkened fog. A second storm rolled in during the loop two overnight, bringing in almost freezing temperatures, rain, and decimating the field. Courtney DeWalter made her first appearance this year and ended her first attempt with a two-loop effort alongside Barkley veterans Maggie Guterrell and Liz Canty. They were the only ones beside myself to complete a, two, a second lap, although over the cutoff to continue. Jared Campbell and Luke Nelson were the only to head out on loop three and finished a fun run in 39.04.08. Truly intense conditions out there and a world-class field was reduced to rubble. Plenty more amazing stories, but we can't cover them all in the main show. This week's episode is brought to you by the Coca Dona 250, the most diverse point to point 200 plus mile foot race in America. The Coca Dona 250 connects landscapes, mountain ranges, canyons, and historic towns in central Arizona, from Black Canyon City into the Bradshaw Mountains through Crown King, and down Whiskey Row in Prescott, over Mingus Mountain through Jerome Cottonwood in Sedona, to the finish in downtown Flagstaff. Join in this May 3rd through the 8th for the inaugural running info at cocodona.com. Raised by Rams vertical challenge kicked off this week. It's a seven day climbing event. And after day one, when this show was scripted, Wayne Edward Ramage was in the lead of virtual vert where treadmills are permitted with 11,322 feet. And Terry Rashid was leading the vert is real where treadmills are not permitted with 11,112 feet of climb. Speaking of climbing, we saw a new 24-hour Schemo, or Ski Mountaineering vertical climbing record from Martina Valmasoy. She climbed 17,645 meters, or 57,890 vertical feet, in just under 24 hours in Aronza de Cadone in northern Italy. It looks like it was quite a party with champagne popping off at the finish. What a way to celebrate, Martina. Congrats. Moving on to some FKT or fastest known time news with one I honestly had no idea existed. This is the Central Park Loop Challenge FKT in New York City. How it works is you run as many standard loops in Central Park as you can in one day. You can start anywhere you want on the 6.1 mile loop, but we must complete the full loop for it to count. 
and it must be done within the open park hours from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. To legally enter and depart the park within those hours, the official challenge lasts from 6.05 a.m. to 12.55 a.m. Robbie Ballinger raised the bar this past week when he completed 16 loops, or 98.49 miles, in an elapsed time of 1807.43. The most shocking thing, 4,800 feet of climb. On to more FKT news. Many record holder Christoph Tuscher, including the Double Wonderland, Cocopelli Trail, Octopal Grand Canyon Crossing, Joshua Tree Double, and more, recently attempted the Double Cocopelli Trail. That's 284 miles between Moab and Fruta. After an epic storm in the La Salles that dumped over a foot of snow above 6,000 feet and closing one of the major access roads, he modified his plan to start in the middle and do two out and backs on lower elevation parts of the course, hoping that other parts would melt out in time. It sounds like he bailed after 171 miles and ran out of conceivable ways to safely get this thing done this time around. I'm sure, knowing him, he'll be back. We saw some action on the Prezi Traverse in the Whites of New Hampshire, this time in winter. Ben Thompson lowered the record on this 18 mile, 8,500 foot route by a full 10 minutes to three hours, 32 minutes. Ben had a hunch a winter traverse might be five to 10 minutes faster than in summer with perfect conditions. Ben carried poles, lightweight spikes, but did have three variations from the previous record holder's route. There's some good discussion on the exactness of his route in his trip report on the Fastest Known Time website. He argues for the case that a presidential traverse should be any route that starts and ends at the normal spots, summiting Pierce, Eisenhower, Monroe, Washington, Clay, Jefferson, Adams, and Madison en route. And finally, we have an exciting follow on the Arizona Trail as Joe McConaughey, AKA Stringbean, former record holder on the PCT, current self-supported record holder on the AT, and current self-supported record holder for the Long Trail, is taking it on. He's fully supported this time around and is aiming to break the current best time of 14 days, 12 hours, 31 minutes. He will be aiming for an 11 to 12 day finish, which would smash the former best times. He started just today, March 23rd, and will be heading south to north. Hey there, if you're enjoying this week's show, please drop us a like on the video and comment below your favorite story of the week. Trail Sisters, along with support from the North Face, is launching a childcare grant program to provide six $150 grants four times a year to parents looking for some extra help to get out on the trails. You can now apply online or donate to the program to provide additional grants. The North Face will be matching an additional $500 for those that choose to donate at trailsisters.com. The NCAA Cross Country Championships were held this past week in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and was live streamed on ESPNU. In the ladies' event, Mercy Chelagata, Chelangat placed first in 2001. She runs for Alabama and won by five seconds over Taylor Rowe. For the team competition, it was all BYU as they placed five women in the top 50 with a 96 point total. On the men's side, Connor Mance of BYU was first in 29-26, way ahead of second place, Adrian Wilshit. In 2948, Northern Arizona University won the title with 60 points. After suffering a near fatal brain injury back in 2015, Tom Green, who is the original Grand Slam of ultra running finisher, bounced back to complete a number of ultras over the past few years. Well, thanks to Il Nasty on our Discord, he clued me into the fact that Tom just finished his 100th 100 miler at the Conquer the Wall 47 hour event. Alleluia! The running event is back. After a one year hiatus, the running event will return to Austin, Texas this December. If you are in attendance, stay tuned for another live show of some kind with myself and Skizzle Fresh. Timothy Olson is back in the news and will be eyeing something a bit longer in 2021. He's announced he will take on the entirety of the Pacific Crest Trail and take a stab at the current record held by Carol Saab. Western States had a couple of announcements this week pertaining to entry into their event. First is international runners will be able to roll over their entry from 2021 to 2022 due to vaccination and travel challenges. The wait list will be utilized to fill these slots. The second is a significant change to the Western States lottery where runners will no longer need consecutive qualifiers in order to keep their ticket count in the lottery. 
This is a change people have been asking about for some time, and it essentially eliminates the need for the one-time lottery buy and for runners to miss out due to injury or illness. Inspirational, Boston Marathon runner Dick Hoyt passed away this week at age 80. Dick is the father who pushed his son Rick in a wheelchair in dozens of Boston marathons over the years and countless other events, including triathlons and a run bike across the US. In this week's bonus story, only available for Patreon supporters, we'll take an expanded look at my experience at the Barkley Marathons from this past week. Backyard Ultra Racing is back, and this weekend saw an outstanding duel between Harvey Lewis and Jennifer Russo. They participated in the Ohio Backyard Ultra, which saw 108 runners tow the line. After 54 hours and 225 miles, Jennifer stepped aside with nothing left to continue, hugging Harvey Lewis and sending him on his way to finish the final loop and take the win in 55 hours. The Terrapin Mountain 50K returned this year to Virginia and saw Mike Fox take the men's win in 4.15.20, just outside the top 10 all-time. Rachel Spaulding was seventh overall in 4.54.55, just two and a half minutes off the course record held by Christina Fulsick, set back in 2013. Next up was the Howard Aislinger Memorial 12 and 24 hour runs. There were 79 participants at the 24 hour and 52 in the 12 hour, which raises money for people with disabilities to further their education. Howard himself contracted polio at age 11 and utilized a wheelchair for most of his life. In the 24 hour, Jacqueline Long placed second overall with 111 miles, and Kevin Lashley was first with 122. Aaron Boss was first woman in the 12 hour with 67 miles, and James Pratt won for the men with 69. This is a story we missed in our show's recent absence, but was pointed out by Big Brother on our Discord. A member of the trail and ultra running family, Rebecca Gartrell, lost her life while attempting to run across the state of Texas February 7th. She was hit after a driver ran into her and fled the scene. She first ran the Rocky Raccoon 50 in 2004 and went on to win the ultra-centric 48-hour race in 2012 with 156 miles, amongst many other ultras over her long and storied career. Fifth at Franklin's 200 mile, first overall at Bucky Ultra 200 Road Race, and many, many others. Rebecca set out to run across Texas to show her pride for her home state and take on a new challenge. She will be greatly missed. Thank you for tuning in to episode 196 of Outhouse News. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episode, and if you'd like to support the show, please join Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each week right from me for as little as $2 per month. We want to mention by name our $25 level supporters and up, the $100 level, Brian Sands, the $50 level, Squirrels Not Butter, Mark Grabowski, Peter pa and Patty Curry, as well as our $25 level supporters, Carrie Savage, Michael Perez, Nick Bailey, Steve De La Cruz, York Beach Runner, Michael Adams, and 10 Junk Miles. And finally, if you'd like to own this week's pair of Jam Jam sunglasses, check out the link below. Have a shitty week.